Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to season two of the Chasing Dreams podcast. I am so excited to kick this season off with our first guest of the season, Miss Jock. Uh, just to give you a little bit more information about her, and then I'll let her say hello. Um, so uh, Jacqueline Tyree Perry, who typically goes by Jock, is known for being a personal growth coach. She teaches women of color how to create a life they love by mastering their mindset, communication, relationships, and self-care. Y'all know those are key, okay? Her mission is to help women stop looking like they have it all together and actually get it together. She has helped women up with all different kinds of backstories, shift their mindset, and get clear on what they want out of their lives, communicate confidently and effectively by standing up for themselves, create healthy and fulfilling relationships, and prioritize their needs without guilt. Her main goal is to help 1,000 Black women create and live a life they love. When she's not helping women live dope lives, she's hanging out with her two daughters, one and 12, and her husband catching up on their favorite shows on Hulu. Hello, Jog. Welcome to the podcast. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. And I am all about dope lives, okay? Live your best life. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. And I'm just curious. So you said your goal is a a thousand women. Where are we at right now? Oh, girl, we've got a ways to go. Um, I just recently really niched down and decided, you know what? I need to to help my fellow sister. I really... You know, I really need to help my fellow sisters. So, you know, I'm going to say we're starting at zero. We are starting fresh. 2020 has been some, you know, some boo-boo already. So So we're just going to say we're... Yes. So we, yes. So we're gonna we're gonna start fresh. We're gonna say we are starting at zero, and you know we we got a thousand to go. Yes, I am here for it, and hopefully we can you know start with me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Let's get my life together. No, I I definitely um make a conscious effort to live the life I want. Um, and part mm-hmm. of that looks like um, like I'm a full time entrepreneur, and that's not always easy. But for me, Mm-mm. it's worth it to get to wake up and right. do what I enjoy. Like, that's a exactly. So I'm definitely here for it. I like to start all conversations with uh, one very simple question. What is the dream for you? Oh, wow. That's a good question. The dream for me... Um... I mean, that starts with helping a thousand women. Yeah. I am super, super passionate about helping black women in general. Um, and like I said, I just recently came to that conclusion. I just feel like um, we have created a space where, um, you know, we're really making ourselves known. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I used to it. be... Kind of, Yes. You know, we used to be in the background, just kind of hanging out, you know, just being background dancers and people would be like, oh, she's good. But then we decided, you know what? No, ma'am, we're not going to be background dancers. We are here. In the, <laughs> we are here in the forefront and we are we are just now deciding to, you know, take our place, you know, mm-hmm. and that's the dream for me to help women get to that point, whatever that looks like, whether that's in their lives, whether that's in business, parenting, you know, every aspect of their lives. I want women to decide, you know what, I'm going to be in the forefront. I'm going to take my place. <clears throat> And, you know, do whatever it is that I want to do. That's, that's my dream for other women. For myself, um, I want to be that person for people. I want to be the person who says, girl, what, why, why, why are we back here? What are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? Step, step up, like step into your power, step into your greatness, whatever that looks like. Um, ultimately, I want to provide my family with a life where they want for nothing they need for nothing um you know they're supported in in every aspect of the word financially mentally emotionally spiritually um that's that's just that's my dream yeah and the one thing that's really interesting about the first part of your dream was you said how black women need to be coming to the forefront and the the irony behind that is we've been doing the work anyway 
haven't we? Why can't we be recognized? You know? And a lot of times when we celebrate our own, when we celebrate, you know, um, like there was a tweet, um, a guy tweeted, he was like, something along the lines of, I love black women. Or no, mm-hmm. he said he wanted to see black women win. And so I right. replied and was like, don't you mean all women? And he's like, no, I said what I said. <laughs> like, why black women have been carrying society for so long? Why is it that uncomfortable for us to now then advocate and say, I want the recognition. I want at least equal pay. Right. And right. I'm going to do more work than you. The least you can do is pay me the same. Exactly. The least you can do without that being an attack or without that being um, me challenging you. Like just because you're right. not, just because you weren't lucky enough to be a black woman does not mean the Lord doesn't love you. (laughs) Exactly. And I tell people all the time, just because you specify a specific set of people doesn't eliminate or diminish or, you know, discount anybody else. And that, I mean, that whole thing happened with, um, you know, the owner of, uh, yeah, uh, you know, the owner of, of Honeypot, like, Mm -hmm. Why, 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 why are you, why are you challenged by this? Yeah. Let me why say, exactly, exactly. And I remember that huge conversation when Black Lives Matter was kind of, you know, getting traction and then it became like, no, it's all lives matter. And it's like, okay, yes. so if all lives matter and Black people are being, I mean, <laughs> extinct creatures and all lives really matter to you. You should be on board too. <laughs> right. You know exactly. What I mean? like if you really feel like all lives matter, that should include the black lives we're speaking about. And you should be able to say, you know what? We whoever you don't even have to take responsibility. Just right. if we're trying to make change, don't fight it. If you really feel right. like all lives matter. Mm-hmm. Yep, I agree. Uh, girl, we could have a whole nother conversation about that. <laughs> yes, so, did yes. Did you realize your dream and has it changed over the years? Wow, when did I realize my dream? Um, you know, I was lucky enough that my parents uh, kind of put the entrepreneurial bug in me. So it's probably been a little over 10 years that I've, you know, kind of dabbled in this and that. And when I realized coaching was a thing, like mm-hmm. I just thought I was giving my friends, you know, advice. advice. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, listen, I'm, I'm helping them level up. Um, I didn't realize it was a thing. And so when I did, I was like, okay, all right, we, I can get into this. So yeah. I went and got certified. Um, you know, was taking night classes and, you know, putting in the hours to get my coaching certification and did that. And, you know, that was, that was how I got to where I am. I, um, like I said, just recently decided that I specifically wanted to help black women. So that was a a really pivotal moment for me just in, um, you know, feeling like I I have to support my people. I have to support my people. So yeah, that was when I realized I, I'm going to be a coach. I'm going to coach these women to get it together. Yes. Um, <laughs> I share your sentiment for sure. Um, when I think about, so um, I'm a motivational speaker. I'm an author. I do development coaching, um, all that fun stuff. And when I look at like my lineage, so my mom just celebrated 21 years as, in her in her business. Um, Mm -hmm. and I think she's been full-time for like 15 years. My mom's mom is a writer. My dad's dad used to do motivational speaking and hosting events and workshops and all that fun stuff. My dad's Mm -hmm. sister, um, is a hairdresser and has been my whole life, which everybody knows being a hairdresser, that is a business. Okay. Yes. Um, And then my dad's aunt and uncle own multiple massage envies. So like literally wow. I am like, I feel like it was my duty. <laughs> yeah. You could you couldn't go out and get a regular job. Uh-uh. Here's the no. part. They all push me to get a regular job. I'm like, guys, wow, get on board. This is happening, you know? Um, 
like my dad works a, a traditional job. So he's the, he's the main one. Like, I mean, you know, if this doesn't work out in a certain number, I'm like, relax. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, but they're all supportive of my business, but I think in the back of their mind, they're like, okay. <laughs> Is this what you really like, want to do? Cause it's also a generational difference too. So like, um, I'm a millennial. Millennials are very entrepreneurial at heart. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the generation prior, which would be traditionally Gen X, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Gen X is very, was raised by people who went through the Great Depression. Let's start with that. Right. Right? And then on top of that, Black people who were raised by people who went through the Great Depression. Um, and so they were taught, you go to school, you get a good job, and you move on. Okay. Uh -huh. You go to college, you get a good job, a good paying job. If you can get a good government job, even better. Yep, even better. Um, yep. And so even with that, all of these entrepreneurs that I just listed all did it alongside of a traditional job first. Right. You see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. like my mom, she had her business about, I think like seven years before she went full-time entrepreneur and, and kind of did it because she kind of had to, you know what I mean? Like right, she right, was right. kind of like pulled out of the workforce. Um, my grandmother worked a, like a traditional job. She writes for fun, honestly. Uh -huh. um, my grandfather works a traditional job. He was just doing that to better, like it was like a side hustle kind of thing. Um, right. And my aunt, she is a full-time hairdresser. And then the other aunt who has the Massage Envies, she was owning a Massage Envy and then also working for a full-time company. And her husband also works for full-time. You know what I mean? So it's like, wow. for me to be a full-time entrepreneur, they're all like, <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> Right, right. And sometimes I'm not. Sometimes right. I'm not. Some days I'm like, you know, that regular nine to five is looking real nice. <laughs> my resume real quick. <laughs> Let me fix this up real quick. Yes. Um, and it's like that sometimes and the show goes on. But month after mm -hmm. month, I feel like um, when I took the leap of faith to leave my traditional job, I feel like I was doing it based on what I felt God telling me to do. Right. And even if that wasn't exactly what he said, I truly believe that he's moved by faith. So when you do think mm -hmm. that you a hundred percent without a shadow of a doubt feel like he's telling you to do, he'll cover you. Oh yeah. It's First. gonna work out. For sure. So let's get into the conversation about mindset. Let's start with why you think mindset is so important. Oh wow. So we only got one podcast episode to come from. <laughs> I mean, honestly, you can come back, okay? Listen, just say the word and we'll get that scheduled. <laughs> oh, wow. So I'll break this down as, as brief as I can. So it's an established set of attitudes by somebody, right? And people will fall into one of uh, two categories. So you've got fixed, which is you allow your limitations to keep you stuck. You decide, oh, this is a hurdle and I can't get over it. The show is over, pack it up, let's go home. And then your growth mindset is you allow those same hurdles to their challenges, but we gonna get this work anyway, right? We gonna, we gonna do this thing. So one of the things I use with, I use it on myself and my clients is, uh, it's called the model. And I need to come up with some fancy pants name for it. But um, the premise of it is you get to choose how you feel about something or someone, right? People typically think, oh, well, I just feel so sad. I just feel so bad. And it just comes out of nowhere. And that's not how it works. Mm -hmm. um, your thoughts cause your feelings, not an event or a circumstance. People and things can't make you feel a certain way, right? Like I always, I always tell my, you know, my kids, I'm like, dude, nobody can make you feel any type of way. Mm -hmm. That was your choice, right? So the chart goes circumstance, thoughts, feelings, actions, result. So you start at the circumstance, right? And that's literally just the place where people derail themselves, mm -hmm. right there. They automatically assign good or bad, right or wrong to a circumstance. And the circumstance is neutral. 
It is just the facts of the situation. It's nothing extra, no cherries, no whipped cream, no nothing. It is literally what can be proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. You mm -hmm. can take it to the bank and cash it. I am a black woman. I have that two is kids. I, I drive a white car, right? Those are the facts. So let me run you through an example. Let's say my husband declares, you know what, babe, I'm going to plan our anniversary date. And he doesn't. See, I done already got feelings attached. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> exactly. exactly. That's it right there. But that you said. Right? Okay. Okay. Right? Okay. The circumstance okay. is, <laughs> this, this is it, right? So the circumstance is, he didn't plan anything for our anniversary. And just like you just did, y'all's mind immediately to, oh, hell. Keep in mind, a thought is just a sentence in our heads, right? Mm -hmm. A thought is just a sentence in our heads. So my thoughts about it are, he's not a man of his word. He must not care. He must not love me. He forgot. So what type of feelings do those thoughts now evoke, right? I could list a Did few. You were prime example. Now I'm mad. <laughs> Now I'm mad, now I'm sad, now I'm frustrated, right? My actions. Well, homeboy's gonna get the cold shoulder, right? Homeboy's gonna get the cold shoulder. We we are beefing, two word responses, right? Okay. Like don't, <laughs> don't bad. play like we, don't play like we haven't done that. And the result is I've lost time with my best friend. We're, we beefing, I'm, I'm not vibing with you right now. Right. So now let's, let's run it back. And the only thing that we're going to change about it is our thoughts, right? Okay. So same, same circumstance. Whew. Homeboy forgot to plan our anniversary. Mm -hmm. Same circumstance. All right. Well, now my thought is, you know what? That's really weird. I know he was so excited about planning our anniversary. Maybe he forgot. I see what you did there. I do. I do. Right? I... <laughs> right? Yes. Right? And I and I know, but 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 in so the, listen. <laughs> let, let me let me let me put you on game. This is exactly why I want to help my black women because we automatically, for whatever reason, go to turn up time, right? We like, oh no, nah, he done forgot. We didn't whoa, 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 whoa. let's 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 back it up. Let's reel it in. Right, let's reel right. it in. Let's give, let's give daddy the benefit of the doubt. Okay. Let's so I, I know he was excited. Maybe he forgot. Right. So what type of feeling is that going to evoke? Well, that, that came out of love. I genuinely feel like, right. I genuinely feel like he might've, it might've just slipped his mind. So my action is going to be, Hey babe, remember you said you was going to play in our anniversary? Like what's, what's, what's this? Are we, are we heading out? We got <laughs> reservations? What's, what's, what's going on? We don't know what his circumstance were. It might be, oh, babe, you know what? I reached out to the restaurant. They said they was going to call me back. They didn't, whatever, whatever. Or, babe, I forgot. Okay, cool. Well, now he's on it. He's, he's had his gentle reminder, his loving reminder, right? And now the result is we turn up, we have a good time, we enjoy each other, we celebrate love. I, I got my time with my best friend right? So the only thing that changed was my thoughts about it. And trust me, this is easier said than done. Don't, don't <laughs> have me sitting up here acting like it's just a flip. Nah, it's not. It's gotta, not like we gotta, work, we gotta work the muscle. <laughs> it's right. Exactly. Because when you think differently, you feel differently and you have to intentionally choose your thoughts. Your brain is like, it's like a computer right? So we have like 60,000 thoughts a day, mm -hmm. 60,000, right? And a lot of them are just running amok without adult supervision. There's no mm -hmm. hall monitor, no security guard. Okay. They just, they doing their own thing, right? Because yeah, a lot of them are habitual. Too. And some, <laughs> some of us who are overthinkers, we probably got like 100,000 running around. Yes. <laughs> like, yes, <what? laughs> yes. right? And so a lot of them are habitual and they're thoughts that we have all the time. So we don't even notice them, right? They're just, they're just kind of on autopilot. So it's like when you, when you go to your search bar, right? And you get ready to type Google. Well, Google pops up, 
Mm -hmm. right? 99% of the time, Google is going to pop up. And that's, that's how your brain is operating. It's like, oh, we've been here before. We know this song and dance. You know what? We'll take it from here. We got this. And this is why we have to be intentional about choosing our thoughts. Our minds get so used to having a particular set of, of thoughts about a particular set of circumstances, we don't even realize it, right? It's just become second nature. So now imagine trying to go in the search bar and typing in googlybear.com. Yeah, well, you gotta type out the whole word. <laughs> Exactly, because Google's automatically going to try to pop up, but that's not what I you want. G. Yeah, as soon as I hit G, Google is like, we're here. Yes. Reporting for duty. Yes. <laughs> so now you have to be intentional about typing Googly Bear. It's the same thing with your mind. It thinks, it knows, because it's habit. But to reprogram it and change your thinking, now you have to really hone in and be self-aware. So when daddy forgot our anniversary, our automatic thinking was, oh, that's bad. He's in trouble. But we, we got to reel it back in and we got to type out googly bear and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. And the more you do this, the weaker the connection becomes between that old pattern of thinking, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Great. So yeah, that's, I mean... That's yeah. I think as brief as I, I can that, make. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that was a great example, honestly. And I just wanted to recap for the audience. Um, correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong, but we said circumstances, that's just the facts of the situation. Yes. The thoughts are what we have control over. Mm -hmm. The thoughts lead to our feelings. Yep. Our feelings trigger actions. Yep. And then the actions bring us results. Exactly. They're bad or indifferent. There it is. Okay. So it is. how easy or not so much is it to change your mindset? I mean, it's just that easy. We ran through that example. And like I said, it's easy in the sense that it's literally just managing your thoughts, but it takes a level of self-awareness and it takes a level of putting in that work to really stop in the moment and think, okay, where, where are we going with this? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like rather than just going off the deep end and your end result be some shit you didn't want. Right. And now you sitting there like, okay, but this, this, this okay, well, Hey, boo, wait a minute. You created this. No, exactly. nobody handed and this to you. Funny, that's the funny part. So even with that example, even if he forgot and then somebody, somebody else reminded him or anything like that, you're in a funk and sitting at dinner that he doesn't figure out. You know what I mean? Like he didn't plan it and all this other stuff. And he mm -hmm. come home from work, like, all right, get dressed. Let's go. You like, yep. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> oh no, we didn't talk about the fact that you done forgot. Out, blah, 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 and now the whole evening yeah. that he did plan is yes. ruined exactly exactly and about it for me it's like thinking about like how many results how much results are we getting um that we don't want and we're not taking accountability or responsibility for yes because a lot of times people want to blame the circumstance and the circumstance just sitting there like wait a minute i'm just here being the facts i'm just chilling how you going how you gonna blame me? I didn't do this, right? Yeah, yeah. And, oh, yeah, and you instead, got yourself here. holding yourself accountable and saying, okay, let's run this back. Whew. Yes. Let's bring it back a few steps. Yes. Okay, what are the facts of the situation? Mm hmm And then go from there. Exactly. For sure. For sure. That is, I get that that's easy, but mm -hmm. it also takes intentionality. Yes. And I think that's what we want to leave the audience with is understanding like it is a simple process, but you have to be intentional about that process. Absolutely. It's not going to just happen. Because I think if anything, no. our minds are predispositioned to figure out the worst case scenario. Honestly. Um, yep. So we have to fight that by then saying, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. let's consider the positive. Let's Mm -hmm. consider grace like in that situation right like, maybe the circumstance isn't good but right. maybe we can counter it with a little bit of grace mm -hmm. you know for the sake of the the bigger <laughs> right right so we're also here to talk about who's in your circle right 
Um, and this is talking about the people we're connected to, the people we're in relation with, um, just everybody, okay? So why does my circle matter in regards to my everybody. dream? Everybody, everybody. So why does the people I'm connected to, like what impact do they have on my goals and my dreams? Wow, so that is, you know, it's kind of twofold because you know, I don't think that people should have control over, you know, kind of your dreams, your destiny, your your goals, your aspirations. However, they do influence it heavily. And so I'm a huge advocate for taking inventory of your circle. And mm-hmm. that requires you to first take inventory of yourself, right? Mm-hmm. So often we are quick to call somebody on ABS, but we will strut past the mirror and not give it a second look. Okay. Right. I, you know, like, hey, okay. amen, I've done it. <laughs> Happens all the time. And you had to, I have, I get you. <laughs> <laughs> like, we, we have done it. it. <laughs> like, my shit don't stink today. And it's like, ooh, girl. Maybe it does. So, yeah, you know, so you've got to check in with yourself and ask, how am I showing up? Who am I attracting and why? What are my values? Am I honoring those values? Then you can take inventory of your circle and figure out, okay, where are things lining up and where are they not lining up? So some of the questions you can ask yourself are, you know, does this person typically make withdrawals or deposits from our relationship? Yes, ma'am. Right? That is huge. Are they, are they bringing something to the table or are they eating off my plate? Like, what are, what are they bringing? Um, and a couple things to consider is that sometimes give and take in, in relationships, friendships is seasonal. I had a friend who was really feeling the type of way. She was, she was in her season, right? She needed a lot of support. And she was just like, I feel like you have given me so much and I have given you nothing. And I'm like, no, 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 which was crazy to me. It was crazy to me because to know her is to know this woman would give you the shirt off of her back in a heartbeat. But I said to her, I'm like, no, honey, like we are in a season. You are in a season of need. When I was in my season of need, you were there supporting me. And I didn't feel like I was doing a whole lot for you at the, at the time either. But that, you know, you have to consider that when you're taking inventories that sometimes, okay, don't just think, oh, well, the last six months I have been given, given, given. Well, has she been, has she been in a season, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing is, what does support look like for you versus them, right? So everybody's support of each other can look different. So for that particular friend, me being there for to be her sounding board was like the ultimate support for her. I don't necessarily need that. I'm kind of my own sounding board. I don't always need to talk things out. But listen, when I got to work and Starbucks was on my desk, okay, that, that was the, all the support I <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. That was all the support I needed. So you also have to look at that too. Um, can you be honest with them? Are you able to communicate like, hey, look, you said something the other day and it kind of kind of threw me for a loop, kind of kind of made me feel a way. Um, can you lovingly suggest therapy? Can you lovingly suggest that they deal with their trauma? Can you tell them, look, I love you, but I don't support whatever this is you got going on. Mm -hmm. Um, can you express to them that they've become toxic, Mm -hmm. right? Because people, people tiptoe around that. They're like, oh, look, she is just negative Nancy and she is doing, okay, well tell her. That's your home, right? Conversation. Exactly. Exactly. You know, do your values align? And just because they all don't align doesn't mean, oh, well, she got to get the boot or he got to get the boot. But it's definitely beneficial for some of your values to, you know, to be in alignment. Um, are they supportive of your goals and dreams? Hell, do they have goals and dreams? Hello. The, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like the biggest. You're not going to bring down my average. Exactly. Exactly. The popping. You can't bring down the. No. You got to bring it up. Challenge us to do it. Exactly. The biggest dream killer is a no dream having friend. Mm. The biggest dream killer. Um, what is the root of the relationship? I see so many people that hold on to obligatory relationships where it's like, oh well, that's my auntie. Okay, well, if auntie ain't hitting on nothing, then auntie got to go. Or oh, well, that's toxic. Yes. 
Yes. Family is to- family is toxic. Uh, can you say it again? Family <laughs> is toxic. <laughs> yes. Yes. No, say no to the obligatory relationships. Well, I've known her since the third grade. Okay, well, great. But is she still acting like she's in the third grade? <laughs> we, you know what I'm saying? Like, what are these relationships based on? Are they substance or surface? Um, you know, it is really difficult to grow past the people that you're surrounding yourself with. And I am a firm believer that you have to surround yourself with the type of people that you are aspiring to be. Amen. Right. Like when, when they say you said it, you hit the nail on the head. When they say you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with, that's a real thing. That's real. Yeah. That's a real thing. Beyonce is not out here hanging with some bums. Hello. She is not out here hanging with people that ain't got she no goals. Have, she don't even have bums on her payroll. Cut it out. Not even. Not even. Cut it out. Right? <laughs> like, Michelle Obama don't have nobody in her crew that's talking about, girl, you can't, uh uh-uh, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. No. Like, when you start to move different... Right. Like when you start to move different and you want to change your habits, like you will realize if the people in your circle support you or not. Right. Because instead of going to happy hour, you saving your money for a workshop or a convention or a retreat to listen to so-and-so motivational speaker. Right. And you go back and you tell your homegirls and they're like, wait, you spent how much to go and listen to somebody talk? Girl, you should have just came out with us. You can just watch that stuff on YouTube. They ain't your friend. Right. Ain't right, but wow, it, you know, that's a lot of really good points that I wanted to kind of highlight for a second. Um, the mm-hmm. first one being supporting people through seasons, um, yes. and that's so true, especially now, right? Yes, I have a friend who's a medical doctor, and mm-hmm. in this season, it's not about me, it's not about nope. what I need from her. It, our friendship has nothing to do with what I need from her. She is out here risking her life on a daily basis, working all these other, like, you know, a harder work schedule, many hours, Mm -hmm. long days, long nights, and then coming home to two children under two. It is my job as her friend, and we've been (laughs) friends for nine years at this point. It is Mm -hmm. my job as her friend in this moment to check on her whether she has time to respond or not. Even if she don't reply to my text message, I'm still going to send another one just to let her know I'm thinking about her, just to let her know. Um, And even I put her on my do not disturb, like my call list. I told her, Uh I "I don't care what time it is. If you need to call, call, call. That's it. And I'm constantly like, hey, just checking in. How you doing? And it doesn't matter if she replies. It doesn't. I know she saw it. I know she knows I care about her. I know she knows I'm supporting her in the best way possible. Um, yes. asking her a cash app, just go get lunch, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. however I can support you through social distancing, <laughs> whatever <laughs> I can do to support you, let me know. And I'm here. And that's, yes. that's that loving through seasons. Um, another thing you brought up was, um, recognizing that support looks differently. And one thing mm-hmm. I challenge people to do is anybody that you care about, ask them what their love language is. Yes. So yes. it doesn't have to just be their romantic partner. You know what I mean? Like, I need to love my mother how she wants to be loved. I exactly. need to love my friend how they want to be loved. I need to love my business partner how he wants to be loved. Um, yep. Just really understanding that in any, if I care about you, I want to show you I care about you how you receive it. Exactly. And being clear about that. Um, and the last thing I want to touch on, and we'll, we'll continue the conversation, but also, <laughs> like, that average is a real thing. There's a study that shows um, it's done with salaries, but mm-hmm. literally, they did a 10-year, like, difference, and the average salary was within $1,000 per annual salary. Wow. If you can, you, money is tangible. You can measure that, right? Mm-hmm. But that just goes to tell you, like, who you're surrounded by matters. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, I know my circle is not all in the same vein. They're not people who I want to be, like, but they're all people right. that challenge me in their own rights. So my best exactly. friend is a doctor. I have a friend who's an attorney. People joke all the time. I'm like, no, my best friend is my attorney. <laughs> and you don't see now. So pull up if you need Try to. Me. Okay? Try me. Pull up. <laughs> I promise you I'm good. 
Um, but you know, um, but I have a friend who, like when I think about my circle, so you have a medical doctor, you have, um, a psychologist. So she did the PhD route. I have an attorney, um, you know, like just everywhere I look, I have people who are challenging me to do the best version of myself because they're showing up as the best versions of themselves. Right. Right. And so, you know, it, it really makes a difference, like who you're connected to. And if you have people who you tell them your dream and they're always being negative, you got to call them out. I had a conversation with one of my friends and I had to tell him, I said, listen, every day, because we talk every day, um, me and this friend in particular. And I said, every day you're complaining about something. I can't have that energy in my life. I need you to figure that out. (laughs) The same job you're complaining about you were excited about when you got the job offer. Yep. I need you to figure that out. Humble and he's yourself. like, well, every day is not going to be a good... Cool. Every day doesn't have to be a good day, but every day can't be a bad day. Right. Because if you're not <laughs> complaining about your job, you're complaining about your wife. If you're not complaining about your wife, you're complaining about your family. If you're not complaining about your family, you're complaining about your job. I can't go in this circle every day. No, that's I live a I live a... I've worked hard to live a peaceful life. You're not going to bring this down every day. No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Nope. But you have to have That's those draining. That is draining. For mm-hmm. sure. For sure. And I think that you have to one, be willing to have those honest conversations, but you also have to be receptive to it. Cause sometimes people yes. don't tell you the truth because they don't know how to tell you the truth because in the past you've popped off because <laughs> somebody was telling you about yourself. Yep. And just like we talked about, their their thoughts are, wait a minute, we've done this before, so let me just, because guess let what, uh, exactly, because action is also inaction, right? Mm-hmm. It doesn't always necessarily have to be that you've done something. So if your <laughs> thought is, yes, so if your thought is, well, last time I tried to tell her she was being a little negative Nancy, she popped off, guess what? Now you're not going to say nothing. Mm-hmm. And, that, and the result is the same. Exactly. And I actually had that conversation um, with this same friend. Um, he's in the process of going through a divorce and they were only mm-hmm. married for like 30 days or something like that. So it's technically wow. for an annulment. And uh-huh. I told him beforehand, I didn't tell him that that wasn't going to work, but I told him, I was like, y'all are going too fast. The problems mm-hmm. that you're facing are only going to get worse when you move in together and then worse again when you get married. So y'all need to get yep. those problems before you proceed. Right. But I was the only person telling him the truth. And so now that yeah. he's moved out and all this other stuff, all his family is like, well, I knew it wasn't going to work. His sister didn't come to the wedding because I didn't support the wedding. And, blah, blah. and he's like, well, why wouldn't they have Where said y'all at? Right. I said, well, you need to hold yourself accountable and ask, when have I been receptive to the truth? Amen. I'm the friend that's going to tell you the truth, whether you want to hear it or not. Not everybody's like that. Nobody's going to push past. If they don't want to hear, if they don't want to hear it, they're not going to tell you. So maybe they tried to tell you or a couple times and they knew you didn't want to hear or you were pushing off or. uh, Uh Uh-huh. So then they stopped because eventually it's your life. You can marry whoever you want to marry. So I'm not going to fight you to go tell you that wrong person. I'm just not. But apparently his whole family was like, nah, that ain't going to work. But nobody w- felt comfortable to voice it because of right. his, how he receives the truth. Mm-hmm. That's so tough. We got to hold ourselves accountable. If people aren't telling you the truth, did you give them permission? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So how do you break up so to speak with people that you no longer want to be connected with like you find out someone's toxic how do you cut that cord gracefully um or do you cut it gracefully <laughs> you know there's yeah i think there's a lot of variables uh in that question that's a pretty loaded question um so i think the first thing is you have to decide is it truly toxic right Mm -hmm. so when i think toxic i think like people have crossed the line whether that's verbal abuse abuse, physical abuse um that that's pretty much what toxic is for me if somebody's just you know kind of down and negative 
you know, that's something that we can work through. We, right. we might be able to do some work with that. that. Yeah, but toxic is like a whole nother level of, you done stepped outside your mind and you got to go. Uh, you know, and, and I think it really depends on the person and how you handle it. I, I like to say 99% of the time handle it with love and grace because people are willing to be more receptive if something is delivered in such a way that, you know, it's not attacking, it's not well, you, you, you. If it's delivered in love and grace, they, they might receive it a little bit better. Um, uh, yeah, so I would say if, it, if it's somebody that is genuinely toxic, I would be very, very cautious about whatever that breakup looks like. Um, and that just might simply be, hey, you know what, we've been friends for a long time, what, you know, kind of whatever it is. Uh, mm -hmm. But this just isn't working for me right now. I think maybe we need to, to take a time out mm -hmm. and leave it at that. Uh, it, again, if they're being physically or verbally abusive, I would be very careful with how you handle that. And I'm, I'm no professional in that area. So I would, I would defer to the experts. Yeah. Um, but if, you know, if it's just somebody who, you know, maybe you've outgrown them, maybe that negativity is just to the point where maybe you've had a couple of sidebar conversations like, look, look, homie, I really need you to, to tighten up this energy because mm -hmm. this, is not, this is not what I need and they can't get with it. That's where you just say, look, I love you. I really cherish this friendship. I cherish this relationship. However, I'm just at a point in my life where I'm looking for different energy and this is not working for me right now. We can table this. We can maybe revisit in a few months, but right now I just need some space. And that's that. Yeah. Some bur some bridges need to be burned. Some you just need to stop taking that direction. Ah, uh, that's it. It's that's okay. that. Yeah. <laughs> but the notion that don't burn your bridge and all, I'm like, no, there are some that some, yes, burned. <laughs> and that's okay. We need to take a blowtorch to this bridge. Yes. Nobody needs to cross it ever again. Honestly. Ever. <laughs> ever. I will swim before I cross this bridge again. I will cross the ocean <laughs> to get away from that bridge. <laughs> yes. So what am I supposed to do when family is the toxic person in your life? Um, so I would say the same thing. I, you know, I don't handle family any differently than I would um, close friends. Okay. And especially because I hold family to a higher standard than I do friends or random people on the street. Something that's always kind of confused me about people is, you know, they give family passes and passes and passes and passes to. You know, and I'm like, wait a minute, but you kicked Sarah to the curb when she didn't, you know, call you back for three weeks. And it's like, no, I'm holding family to a higher standard because as my family, you know me well enough to know, you know, what my limits are, what my buttons are, what my boundaries are. And as family, as my mom, as my dad, as my sister, brother, auntie, cousin, why would you not respect me enough to respect my boundaries, respect my wishes, whatever it is, right? So, you know, I, I handle family the same way that I do friends. If it gets to a point where it's toxic, I don't want to participate anymore. I just have that conversation like, hey, you know, I love you. I appreciate everything you've done. I appreciate this relationship. Unfortunately, I'm at a time, I'm at a place in my life where this is not working right now. And I, you know, it's not even about what you did and you're not supporting me and you it doesn't even need to be all that. Make it about you. Make it about you. I'm at a time in my life where I'm just looking to surround myself with different people. This isn't working right now. The energy that's coming from this relationship is really draining me and I need a break. Mm -hmm. And I like what you said about holding family to a higher standard as opposed yes. to, I feel like, especially in the Black community, we have embraced uh, yes toxic family members being normal yes and it's a really unfortunate scenario because it's one of those things that is clearly 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 being passed down it's um, generational absolutely for sure generational so you know your mama treated you how her mama treated her and it, it and it just continues on and it's okay it's okay because if you have to tell me 
but that's your so and so. <laughs> that that ain't gonna work for me. I'm gonna be honest with you. That's not gonna work for me. Um, and mm-hmm. I've had that challenge. Um, me and my father have had issues. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, it got to the point where I had to tell him one day. I said, "Listen, if I wouldn't tolerate this from a dating prospect." I'm not going to tolerate it from the person who intentionally chose to create me. Amen. I just can't. You created me on mm-hmm. purpose, no less. And you think I'm going to take this? No. <laughs> it, it, no. Like, I, I just, I cannot. I cannot. And when, um, when the issues with, I call him my ex-baby daddy because we did lose the twins, but mm-hmm. with me and him had problems and my father is still uh, mad at him and I'm like he ain't did nothing that you didn't do right right uh, are you mad at yourself too or like how <laughs> how is this working because you're very angry at someone who only treated me how you taught me to accept yep yep and now that That's- I'm doing better I'm not even going to tolerate it from you because yeah. until you can get that together I'm good yeah I'm good and that's what it takes. It just takes you to set that boundary. I mean, that's that's really all it is. And people try to make it about, well, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I don't want to rock the boat. I, girl, listen, rock that boat as hard as you can. Okay. Get off the boat while you're at it. Hello. And the reality is sometimes you have to be selfish enough to decide, I can't allow X, Y, Z. I can't allow this behavior. I can't allow this disrespect. I can't allow this person to continue on in my space that's just it is what it is yeah and the thing about boundaries the earlier you set them the easier it is to set and the easier it is to receive on the other yes so if you're just now setting boundaries just know it's going to be hard people who are violating your boundaries are not going to like the fact that you now have boundaries they're exactly however as you develop newer relationships or newer situations Set those boundaries up front, and mm-hmm. it's okay. Um, a great example of this, um, I have a friend who, um, the same friend who going through a divorce now, he's like, well, she always wears the shoes in the house and tracking all this dirt and mud in the house and da 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 I said, well, when did you tell her not to wear her shoes in your house? <laughs> <laughs> well, every time I bring it up, she thinks, oh, your place is better than mine, and da da And I said, listen, um, there was someone I was dating and the first, like the second I walked into his house, he was like, you gonna take those shoes off? It was a simple conversation mm-hmm. and had no fuss, no muss, but he set that boundary. The first time I stepped foot into his home. Exactly. And every time I've stepped foot into his house after that, I just know. Take I know the shoes. boundary. You take off your shoes at the door. Cool. No problem. But the problem is you waited until three, four years down the line to now want to say, take off your shoes. Take your shoes. And now you acting brand new and I don't even know you. <laughs> but the first time she came over, had you said, do you mind taking your shoes off? It mm-hmm. wouldn't have been no problem. Exactly. No problem. So set those boundaries up front and they're easier to it, verbally set them for starters. Verbally right. set your boundaries and let people know what it is up front and they won't have problems honoring that or they can go. (laughs) Yeah. And I think that's major key. You said it verbally set those boundaries. I think we assume somebody's going to know whether it be like, you know, you make kind of a little sidebar offhanded comment or no, just be adult, use your words. Yes. Use your words. And and you hit the nail on the head. If you have somebody who is not used to respecting your boundaries, absolutely. They will try it and not on purpose, but again, back to what we talked about, that's what they're used to. That is naturally where their mind goes. Oh, well, I can talk to her this way and it's going to be cool. And that's where you have to decide how many times are they, am I going to allow them grace because they're not used to this new, this brand new me. How many times am I going to allow them grace and what is the consequence? Because that's so often where we fall off where we set this boundary, but then there's no consequence. It's like, all right, fuck it. They, they just can't. Right. I tried. I will say the hardest relationships to set boundaries in has been family. Um, Mm -hmm. Me and my mom have a pretty close relationship. Um, But when I've set boundaries, it, 
when I had started setting boundaries, it was hard at first because she kind of took mm-hmm. it personal. Like I remember right. one time um, I took a nap and I put my phone on airplane mode because, or do not disturb one or the other, but either which way mm-hmm. I wanted uninterrupted sleep. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I needed uninterrupted sleep and I was sleep for maybe like an hour. And so on her end, it rang once and then went to voicemail. Mm-hmm. So that was the circumstance. <laughs> her yes. thought was her thought was she sent me the voicemail so when I called her back and she's like oh now you want to call me back and da-da-da. and I was like I was asleep what's up sure. well no you sent me the voicemail da-da-da. I said I did not send you to voicemail I sent everyone to voicemail and you just happened to call while my phone was in that setting now how may I help you <laughs> <laughs> what can I do for you? <laughs> what can I do? And at first, she really like took it as a personal attack, and right, she tried to brush off the conversation. I said, "No, no, no, uh, uh-uh. no, no, <laughs> reel it back." I in. did not send you to voicemail. My phone was on silent because I was exhausted and I needed a nap. Right. That being said, hello, mother. <laughs> How may I help you today? And it really took a couple of, com- like, you just have to be willing to under, when you're set new to setting boundaries, you have to understand these are new for the recipients as well. And you have to give them right. that grace and also verbally communicate it so people understand. I'm not yes. setting boundaries to offend you. Right. I am setting these boundaries to honor me. Yes. Absolutely. And it has nothing That's to it. Do with anyone but what I need in this moment. Mm-hmm. Like, and I, um, I remember I was telling uh, my mom about my friend. She has, um, her boundary is you don't show up at her house without calling first. Uh, yes. That is a firm boundary for her. Don't pop up. She will literally <laughs> watch you in her driveway and not open the door. <laughs> you do not come to her house oh without gosh. calling her. And my mom, I remember my mom, she was like, well, what about her mother? And I was like, her mom is included in that. It's Ooh. really not asking a lot to give me a heads up before you come to right. me that yes. I did for. Like, it's not a hard boundary. I'm not asking you to pay $50 at the door. I'm just saying, right. give me a heads up. Hey, right. are, you, are you home and are you available for company? Yes? Yes. Sure, I'll be there. Great. Right. Great. Right. It's not a hard boundary. I swear. I swear. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> very simple boundary. Oh and she's gosh. very consistent with that and has been. This is a friend I've known for nine years. Mm-hmm. I I don't call you just know you she yeah. hear about it up front. She has those yep. conversations. And if you try if you decide to violate that boundary, it don't matter who you are, she will look at you. Like, excuse me, did did I miss your call? Did you did you leave me a message? I didn't, I didn't hear. I'm to walk around the house naked, so you might get a surprise. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> you may want to give a hand up or two. She's or like, well, that'll show you. you. You won't show up unannounced again, will you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Boundaries, oh people. Yes, yes. Yes. Communicate them and express them in the beginning, the first time, or bo- preferably before someone violates your boundary. But mm-hmm. definitely the first time that boundary is violated, kindly explain to them this is a boundary for me. I would appreciate yep. if you respected that moving forward. Mm-hmm. And then it's easy. That's it. And it's as simple a conversation as that. Like, it doesn't need to be this big thing. Just simply, hey, this, this is the line. Please don't cross it. Yeah. But the problem is we give people grace without the conversation. Yes. And then they do it again because they don't know. And they don't they know. Do again, and then they do it again. And then they do it again. And now you've got resentment. And now you pissed off. And then you blow mm-hmm. up. And they're like, damn, I just popped up at your house. <laughs> I just came to visit. Just came to visit. Why are you snapping at me? Because I never communicated my boundary. Exactly. And that and that's that piece where you've got to take accountability for that. You didn't you didn't use your words. You didn't say, hey, this is the line in the sand. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So overall, what would you say is your number one secret to success? Whoo, we um 
my secret to success, um, I think is really getting my belief system in check. Mm. Like, I know that I cannot e- accomplish anything uh, with the belief that I can't accomplish anything, right? You know, like you if, can, if I say, I was no, no, go ahead. Quote that says, "Whether you think you can or you think you cannot, or you think you right. can't, you are right." Exactly, and that and that's literally it. That is literally it. That is the secret to success for me. I know that it is all about making sure that my mindset is right and my belief system is in check, because I, they can't be competing, right? I can't in the back of my mind be thinking. Man, I know damn well I can't make a thousand dollars this month. I know damn well I can't buy a house. Mm-hmm. But on the outside, I'm saying I want to buy a house. I want to. Mm-hmm. They can't compete. Mm-hmm. If they're not in alignment, I'm not going to be able to accomplish whatever dreams, goals, whatever it is that I have in place for myself. For sure, and I'm experiencing that um, in my in my relational life uh, as far as romantic relationships because Mm -hmm. so I'm 28 and I've always wanted a husband I've always wanted kids you know the whole nine yards um but in periods of singleness I've always been like but I don't need a man and maybe I'm not gonna (laughs) maybe I'm just gonna be the rich auntie and maybe I'm just gonna you know all these other things um but for 2020 I have declared 2020 the year of love for me Mm -hmm. and with that I've had to hold myself accountable and say if love is what you're saying you want, that is all you can say that you want. And not just what I verbally say, but what I feel. Yes. I can, yes, that, that romantic situation may not have worked out, but it's still mm-hmm. my year for love. My husband yes. will find me this year, okay? He's coming. I mean, we ain't gonna get married this year because that, you know, we gotta make <laughs> steps. We gotta make progress, okay? Right. But... He will find me this year. This will be my love. This will be my forever love. And he is coming at some point in 2020, even if that's December 31st, 2020. That is okay. 2020 will be my year of love and making sure that my thoughts and my feelings and my actions are all aligned with that. And also from the action standpoint, I'm not entertaining anybody that can't possibly be that person. Hello, hello. That's it right oh, there. Face. You got yes, the face. You need. Yes, yes. If, yes. if I've already seen red flags, that you not like. Okay, bye. <laughs> Doodles. <laughs> but it really it was nice knowing with, you exactly. But it really starts with making sure that your mindset is set in the direction of what you want. Because a lot of times we say mm-hmm. what we want but we think something's different and really what you think is what you're going to attract. Exactly. Yes, ma'am. So what final thoughts do you have for us as an audience? Oh, wow. Final thoughts, I think is really just, um, you know, decide what you want, decide what you want out of life, decide what you want um, out of your relationships decide how you want to be, how you want to show up and do that. You know, people think it's just so hard to change. It's so hard to do something different. And the reality is it isn't. It's just, it boils down to a choice. It boils down to, do I really want something different? Do I really have friends that ain't broke and complaining and bitter? Okay, well, great. Then go out and find new friends. Mm Mm-hmm. So that, I mean, I think that's my, my closing piece is just decide what you want and get it. Amen. Yes, man. Yes. So you have dropped so many gems today. <laughs> Where can everyone find you? Oh, wow. So you can find me on Instagram at coached by jock and jock is just J O C like young jock. <laughs> um, and <laughs> meet me in the trip. Go um, with that. <laughs> yes. Um, or you can find my little home on the internet at www.coachedbyjock.com. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for having me. Yes. I, I've learned a few things. I, circumstance, thoughts, <laughs> yes. feelings, actions. Mm-hmm results. Uh, that's yes, ma'am. That's my takeaway. <laughs> yes, ma'am. 
Like whenever you feel in the way, all right, let's bring it back. What is the circumstance? Uh, reel it in. <laughs> bring it back yes. a little bit. So yes. thank you so much for your time and for being a part of the Chasing Dreams podcast. Awesome. Yes. We'll see you next week.